Hey, ah, oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, can I, are, can I press it? No, no, we are live on YouTube. Okay. You don't have to press it. Okay. So I request everyone to please keep their mics and video switched off. And uh, we are live on YouTube now. Okay. So thank you everyone for joining us for the webinar series, Let's Talk Primates. Uh, today we have a very special guest with us with a very long list of accolades and recognition. And she was able to join us despite her busy schedule. Uh, she did her master's and doctoral degree from Kyoto University and is now a professor at the University of Sri Jayawardene Pura at Sri Lanka. Her contribution to the field of primate studies is magnificent. An expert on primates of Sri Lanka with an area of specialization ranging from behavioral ecology, primate social cognition, comparative studies on macaques, primate fossil studies, fossil forensic anthropology. She's also involved in ethnoprimatological studies in relation to Sri Lanka, which we are hoping to hear a bit about through her talk today, as a lot of members of AIP are also involved in primate interaction, human primate interaction studies. So I proudly welcome Professor Charmelina Laj. Please, you can start whenever you're ready. Good evening, everybody, and I really uh, like to thank the Association of Indian Primatologists for giving me the opportunity to come and present few of uh, our work that we have been doing in Sri Lanka. So, and when uh, uh, Partha talked to me, I was really happy to accept the invitation because I feel so, because uh, since Professor uh, and in the same way, he's also quite a very good friend of us. So it's really nice to be here and share some of our findings and thoughts with you. Uh, shall I start, talk, go on with the talk? Yes, yeah, then you can start. Okay. Okay. okay, so here what I would like to do is, so since this is just a, like, a, 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 I will be doing a very general talk. So the outline of, my talk will be like I will talk briefly about the primate species in Sri Lanka and then some of the historical records of primates you know like how, like we have like from very early onwards we have primates in Sri Lanka and in even our cultures and books there are records on primates so I will briefly talk a bit about that and then, of course, we'll talk more on the primatological work in Sri Lanka, my work. And also, I would like to introduce some of the people who has been doing primate work in Sri Lanka, because there are not many people doing primate work in Sri Lanka. So I would like to like talk and introduce you to some of them. So then you know, in general, what's happening regarding primates in Sri Lanka. So if we like go at first about this, the type of primates we have in Sri Lanka, we have five, five primate species. And then uh, if we look at that, we have like the top macaque, who we call as the, the Macacasinica. And with that, we have three subspecies of top macaque. And then we have the purple faced leaf lander, and we have four subspecies of uh, purple faced leaf lander. And then we have the slender loris, two species, and each having two subspecies as well. And then, of course, we have the gray lander. So these are the non human primates and plus, of course, the humans. So these are the five uh, primate species we have in. Sri Lanka for the bomb. Okay. And then, so when we talk about the, I'll first talk about the macaques. And then when we talk about the macaques, so we, I told you that we uh, have divided them and oh, we have three subspecies of uh, macaques. And then the, we use these uh, 
external morphological traits to differentiate between these sub three subspecies. And the traits the, that we use most are the fur color, the color of the tail, and especially the length of the crown hair. Like you can see when we look at the, the top macaque, it's very closely similar to the bonnet macaque in India. The only difference is the top macaques, the lips and the ears are a bit, uh, it's actually black compared to the bonnet macaques. And, then, and of course, in size also, the top macaques are smaller compared to the bonnet macaques. So, and so the, the color of the coat also differ between these three subspecies and the color of the tail and the the crown, the length of the head hair is uh, quite varies. You can see in this top picture that is the dry zone one, it has the shortest hair, and then you have the, the, the left corner, the aurifrons, the wet zone top like that, and then the monte. So I just like in, in later slides you can see them. For example, this is the the dry zone top macaque, you can see it is the, the widely distributed macaque in Sri Lanka because it's spread throughout the dry zone of the country. And like the three tra traits that I told you, you can see the head hair. The length of the head hair is shortest in the, uh, the dry zone top macaque, the Macacacinica sinica. And of course, the color of the coat is also are uh, relatively lighter compared to the other species and the color of the tail is also lighter. Actually, to our knowledge, this is just a kind of a subspecies uh, difference based on the environment that they live upon because these monkeys mainly live in dry zone. So with this high light intensity and sparse vegetation, this could be one reason why they have this lighter colors and oh. and then this is the the wet zone top macaque macacacinica aurifrans we can we also uh, call it as the dusky top macaque or the red monkey because of its coat, coat color it has like kind of a reddish golden coat color and they are mainly confined to low and midland uh, tropical rainforest in the country and then, of course, the third one, as I told you, this is the mountain uh, uh, top macaque, Macacacinopis tomelas, mainly found uh, in about 1,500 meters. And these monkeys, these macaques, compared to the other two subspecies, are quite large bodied and they have thick fur and thick, long fur. And this is mainly could be because they live in very all temperatures, so it could be an adaptation to that uh, temperature. And then, of course, when we look at this uh, purple face leaf, uh, the, we call it earlier, we call it as Rachipithecus betulus, but now recently we changed the name to the Semnophithecus betulus. It also has uh, four subspecies distributed in four geographical regions. So the first one is the Semnopithecus betulus, betulus also known as southern lowland purple face lander, mainly in the lowland and midland pet zone. As you can see from there, these are quite uh, like beautiful langurs and they have very black fur. The coat color is quite black and their beard is very conspicuous. And, but the important, the feature that distinguish it from the rest of the subspecies is their, the white drum patch. Because like when you see the monkey, even from afar, you can see that white drum patch quite clear. So that is one of the best features to identify this Semnopithecus vetulus uh, for the uh, southern purple face lander. And this is the other one is the western purple face lander, also known as Semnopithecus vetulus nester. 
that is found mainly in the western province of the country. And there are what happens, the difference between them is the western purpose language coat color is quite like light compared with more, more like a gray color, gray to ash color. So you can see the run patch quite clear. So in that way, because there are in some places that you can see both both species clearly in one place, in practically, but in, in that way, you can see the difference like by looking at the rum patch and the coat color. So it's, they, they are quite uh, distinct features among these two subspecies. And the third one is the Semnopithecus petulus monticola, the mountain species. And of course, like the, the macaque mountain species, it's mainly found around up like above, above 1000 to 2200 meters, especially around in Sri Lanka, around the Horton Plains from there upwards. These monkeys are known as the bear monkeys because like, like the opistomelas, they have, have very large bodies and of course quite stocky large bodies with thick fur. So that is why people really think like that they are bears on trees. That is why they call as the bear monkeys. And the, the very distinguished feature of these bear monkeys, they don't have the white rump patch, not like the other two subspecies. The bear monkey doesn't have that white rump patch. And then the other one is the Semnopithecus vetulus filbricki, we call as the northern dry zone purple face leather. And this is also quite like these monticola subspecies, but the difference is the species like uh, the body size is quite smaller, but, and that also, that monkey also doesn't have uh, the rump patch. So that is why there are some, uh, uh, some like a belief that these monkeys, the monticolas, since they were in the central highlands, they went down to the north, and then afterward that they became the filbricky. And here also, like the filbricky, they also have certain restricted uh, uh, distribution because like once you go to the north of Sri Lanka, there's not much trees. So like up to, like, up to Kilinochi, only some part of, only the southern part of the north, northern province, you can see these monkeys. Because see, these monkeys are strictly arboreal species. So when the, since the trees are sparse in the dry zone, northern dry zone or in the northern region, like you don't see much of these monkeys after. But in the Jaffna area, you can see the other species, but not this species. And then comes the second, so out of the two language species, this is the second language species, Semnophyticus chiam thersiter, so we call as the gray langur or the crested gray langur. And from our studies, we haven't seen any subspecies of this uh, langur because uh, we have done some surveys throughout the country, but we don't see any subspeciation. But now we are take, doing some DNA work to see if there are subspecies in that. And so it is also because you can see the Sri Lanka has a very large area of dry zone. Actually, about 60% of the country is the dry zone, belongs to the lowland dry zone. So because of that, uh, they also have a quite wide uh, distribution in the country. And then, of course, when we talk about the lorries, we have in Sri Lanka, we have the slender lorries. And of course, in the lorry species also, we have two species of lorises. That is the lorries tardigraders, the wet zone uh, species, and also in the wet zone species, we have two subspecies, that is the Loris tardigradus tardigradus, the wet zone lowland slender Loris, that is, and then the other one is the 
Loristan degradus, Nictisomoides, the uh, hot plains, slender loris. So this is the two. Uh, this is the species that inhabit the lowland and highland of the wet zone of the country. Especially in this uh, lowland uh, species, they have quite a nice reddish brown color. A very nice. Uh, 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 species actually, and this Horton plain slender loris for for years we were not able to find this uh, loris, but uh, then Dr. Saman found it few years back after seventy two years after seven yeah it was recorded. So that is why everybody thought this was extinct, but now we know that we still have these species in the Horton plain. And then the dry zone uh, loris species are known as the loris lidocarianus. There's also we have dry zone lowland slender loris known as loris lidocarianus nodicus. And then the dry zone hills, hill and uh, slender loris known as the loris lidocarianus grand. So that is a very brief uh, introduction to the type and the subspecies of the primate we have. So altogether we have four uh, non-human, five actually, five non-human primate species with 12 subspecies. And then uh, there's this uh, other thing also that I would like to talk. This is, even though we have those like four four or five subspecies, there are some variations in this, uh, some of the species, especially when we take the Semnopithecus vetulus nest the purple faced leaf lander. So in the western purple faced leaf lander, we can find a color map. So we are studying about this color map. It's known, so we call it as the white color map of a western purple faced leaf lander. And you can see this is the, the normal, in the left side is the normal purple face lander, but the other one you can see the, the white color of the, uh, the uh, purple, the, the white uh, lander, uh, white purple face lander. And these purple face lenders, not only the western uh, purple face, you can uh, see these white, white more purple face lander in the southern sub species as well. There's another group called Madura de Silva and they are also studying about this southern white moor purple face leaf lander and we are studying about the western uh, white moor uh, purple face leaf lander. So that is that and then of course there are some other color variations in the uh, the grey lander as well as you can see in the top picture represents the the normal uh, purple face leaf lever that uh, that we can see everywhere throughout the country, but in certain areas we can see this uh, like golden color purple face leaf lever. Not as uh, many as these ones, but there are in some groups you can see this uh, color variation as uh, well. But we don't know for sure why this happens. And then, of course, uh, this is what I thought I told you that I will talk about the briefly historical records of the primates in Sri Lanka. It is the earliest written records of primates uh, in Sri Lanka was uh, we can find in a book called Deepavansha, and it's also known as the Chronicle of the Island. It was uh, written in Pali during 30. Fourth century A. And then afterwards, uh, there are, and then afterwards, around 15th century, you know, that's it's a there was a very rapid growth of the classical literature. And as a result, there were many Sandesh poetry. So I'm sure, like in India, also, like we have this kind of Sandesh poetry or sisters. And in those, we have like uh, eight, nine Sandesha poetries, and they are this 
the Sun Asia poetry means that they use a bird, a type of a different type of bird, as messengers to send messages from the king to the relevant parties. So, in these two of these uh, poet, Sun Asia poetry, especially the the Gira Sun Gira Sun Asia Gira means parrot. Gira Sun Asia and Mayura Sun. Myra Sandeshe means peacock. Myra is peacock, Gira parrot. So in these two Sandeshe poetries also, the author describes the presence of monkeys during the journey, like the, the bird trip. So in those ways also, like we can say the people are aware of the pioneers present and then they are really talking about the behaviors, how they play and what they eat. So that means they are quite aware about the behavior of the primates on these uh, eaters. And then, but the thing is, none of these poetry talk about the different species, but just the, the description and the presence of monkeys in the island. However, the detailed descriptions of the primates were first made by Robert Knox in 1681 because uh, he was captured uh, by King Rogers in uh, the second and he was here for 13, 19 years and he was able to uh, go to different parts. He was a prisoner but he was able to travel in the country. So during his travels, he was able to find many monkeys and he was he has recorded the type of monkeys that he has seen during his stay. And there he talk about two types of lenders and the talk method. So here he says the two types of lenders as wonder. Yeah, because in Singhalese, the langurs are known as Bandura. So this Bandura may be that's why people must be talking, calling them as Bandura from that time onwards. That's why he also tell the term, like talk about the langurs as Wanderus. And then of course the talk macaque. And in Singhalese we call them as Rilava. So that Rilava is also is what he calls as Rilo. So it could be, so it's quite similar to the pronunciation that we have. So he also says about two types of language and the talk, and the talk, and you can see the, the pictures and they are shown. He has clearly captured the features of the, the language and of course what he has here as Vandura is the the purple beast. You can see the clear, the beard. It is quite uh, clear in the picture and the other one is the top man. So he, he is the one who really for the first time talk about the types of uh, primates in detail in Sri And then of course around 1821 to like to end up the, uh, the 19, uh, like 18, Hundreds, the half the forms, Bennett and Philip uh, Freedom Carpenter, they all talk and give detailed descriptions of lemurs and other species in Sri Lanka. And then, of course, Baker and Walters uh, remarks on the unusual resemblance of the purple face lemur to human race because. Many people even nowadays think that purple face lenders are more similar to Sri Lanka face wise. So that is why these people also had remarked about that. And then of course Tennant in 1859 thought he's the one actually who after Robert Knox write about the number of species of primates in his book an account of the island physical, historical, and topographical with notices of its natural history, antiquities, and production. So here this, he says that in Ceylon, the earlier name of the country, that there are five species of uh, 
primates and he say out of these five species four of them belong to the lemurs or the wanderers and the other one is the the river or the macaque and as now as at present then he also says that it is the universal okay and favorite of both natives and europeans but here i i will talk about this later about more in detail about when i talk about the ethnochromatology of the of our studies in Sri Lanka. and then this is another part that is really uh, uh, related to the ethnochronology that is still in 1930 he has mentioned that the traditional doctors the traditional village doctors is known as Vedarada and he has been using the meat or the fat of the monkeys to cure traditional day. He makes a medicinal oil out of that to certain to cure certain diseases like soul, not diseases like the, here in this case he has uh, used it for cure for the soul and heads. But later, I will show you some of the other things that traditional doctors use, uh, the parts, body parts of the monkeys that they use to uh, cure certain illnesses in people. And then, of course, afterwards, the most important work about primates were done by him. And he has been, uh, he has done like quite a lot of work that we use. These are the very important literature we have on Sri Lankan primates from these areas up to this time because the, the, the written records are quite thick. So these are like scientific records are very important for us. They help us. But then afterward, after 1915, many people worked on different areas of primates and then now we have quite a good literature source on research papers about the Sri Lankan crime. So this is just a very brief history for you all to get an idea about our primates and how the work has done and has progression up to now. And this is the part where I told you that I would like to talk about the the primate, uh, the people who are doing primate research in Sri Lanka. So one of the pioneering people who is doing primate research in Sri Lanka is Dr. Wolfgang Ritters. So he has come to Sri Lanka in 1968 and from there onwards he has made colonial archaeological site as his uh, base and he has been studying uh, behaviors of primates, mainly macaques, from then onwards and he has really some nice data on that and now at the moment he's talking, he's researching more into uh, the human uh, primate conflict as well. And then the other person, one of the other prominent person is Dr. Jamie Dara. He, uh, she's a freelance consultant for primate studies in Sri Lanka. And she is mainly concentrating on the copper face lumber, especially the Western copper face lumber. And she's also doing quite good work on this. Uh, Purple face lenders, and of course, she teaches in certain universities as well as a, a visiting lecture. And then, of course, uh, I know you, you all must be quite familiar with Dr. Rajni Vandakorn. So, she, he's from the University of Rajarata, and he's also working mainly on uh, gray lenders. Gray lenders. And uh, he's working on Radhapura and Polonaro area, Grey Langer and uh, Purple Face, Philbricky, Philbricky, uh, Western, North, North, Northern Purple Face Leaf Langer as well. And then, of course, the, the in the lower picture is Dr. Saman 
Gamed Bey, and uh, he's from University of Colombo, and he's the person who's studying about the lower species in Sri Lanka, and actually, he's the one who found the hot and plain scent and the lowest after 72 years. So he has done really a remarkable job of finding and studying about this fish. fish. So these are the, other than us, so these are the, the four main people in Sri Lanka who are continuously doing quite good work and try to so like give good or best knowledge for the development of the field of primatology in Sri Lanka. But there are other people like uh, Dr. Rudran, who is not in Sri Lanka, but comes to Sri Lanka one time to time and work on Sri Lankan primates, and many other uh, scientists who do short-term research on Sri Lankan primates. So this is uh, a brief them and description of them. And this is our research term working in Sri Lanka. So these, these the three, Professor Michael Afghan, Professor uh, Tanaka Hiroyuki, and Professor Yoshi Kaumato, mainly works with me, uh, with my work in Sri Lanka. And uh, as you all know, I think Professor Michael Huffman was my uh, supervisor during my master's and PhD at Primary Research in Institute Kyoto University. From that time onwards, we have been working together and from 2005, we have an MO with the Kyoto University and we have been working since then. Professor Tanaka and Professor Kawamoto has been doing the genetical work in Sri Lanka because I'm not a genetist and neither is uh, Professor Huffman, so they are the ones who are doing the genetical part of our work. And then this is our, so from here on this, very briefly, I will talk, tell you some of the work that uh, we have been doing in Sri Lanka. These are all like ongoing research work and one of them is that, as I told you, that we are studying the uh, western white move of the western purple face leaf layer. So in, uh, in 2009, actually a student of mine told about this uh, white monkey. They call them as white monkeys in one of our provinces. We call it as the Sabaragamo province in that province in Sri Lanka and they said that they have white monkeys there. But the thing is our people call white monkeys for the grey lager as well. So it was a bit confusing but then when we talk more about it, then we thought that it is when we then they saw us a picture and then we saw that it is different from the grey lager. So that is how we started to uh, like started going there and then try to like do a survey to see where actually these monkeys are and the number so you can see in the map in this black star that is where uh, we found we find them mainly but now we have uh, like uh, found many more of them so we went there and did survey on this area and then we came across uh, 16 troops and we were able to record white moths in 12 of the troops. And when we count the monkeys all together, we saw 28 white moths per face length. And this is the breakdown of the, the age class of the, the monkeys. You can see that they are quite, quite white and like some are some are quite white but some monkeys they have black patches so it is not as some are not as white as uh, other monkeys but as you can see in this picture you can see they are not in a separate group all the black monkeys and the white monkeys are living Together, you can see in the other side next to this uh, 
white uh, black monkey there's a white lever as well so that is why in one group you can have see both monkeys and what we have found out is so far like most of the the males are the the like white males the other alpha males in most of the groups and the adult females are like associated with the the male and then some we have like like recently we have found that there are some uh, new infants of the white mothers well. and then when we look at the phylogeny of dog mothers as uh, you can see this work was actually done by uh, we collected the fecal samples we did the genetic analysis using the the fecal samples and then uh, it was analyzed by professor kaumoto and uh, professor tanaka and uh, we did the pcr up to oh, like in sri lanka and they did the the, the sequencing in japan primary research institute so we analyzed the uh, mitochondrial dna from the macaques and then we were trying to investigate the regional variation and then the divergence and differences in subspecies and the evolutionary background of the top monkeys so what we found out so why this is actually again an ongoing research and then what we found was like there are two major groups of macaques in sri and it has two separate clusters so put into the 16 sr rna and there are the so we named it as uh, a group and then b group and then we try to see if these like so because at the moment at present we have three subspecies of macaques but in the genetic analysis we can see only two Uh, subspecies two, two clusters of the macaques. So we try to see because we collected the samples from throughout the island, representing the dry zone, the wet zone, and then the low country, hill country, like that. We so try to like take samples to represent all three subspecies of the macaques, and then then we uh, try to put the the subspecies also to this you can see to this group a and b and you can see the the sinica subspecies from the dark close black close cycle and then opisthomelas in stars and the aurifrons in the open cycle in group a you can see that all these uh, three subspecies can be seen but in group uh Uh, group B and then group A, of course, there's only the Sinica and the Opisthomelas species. So that is why we think that that the subspecies there's no really according to the 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 clusters the subspecies are really like more kind of mixed mainly in the upper group not in the lower and then we did the sequence analysis of the loop region also and it shows the same uh, results with as with the 16s are rna and of course these are all across uh, the cosmos work uh, because he's the one actually who did it as i told you like i'm not a genetist and i'm not very familiar with this but then we try to put it according to the topography of the uh, country and then we saw that uh, the two groups appear to be separated into two areas of the country as you can see the group a that is denoted from the the red uh, circles are more closely segregated to the middle 
central mountainous regions of the country, the A group. But the blue group, as denoted by these stars, purple color stars, are more widespread or distributed in the dry zone or in the lower. Actually, this is not dry zone, no wet zone. This is mainly from the highlands and the lowlands. The A group is more into the highlands and the B group is more into the uh, lowland of the country. So when we look at this, uh, our work, in, so this is also really uh, ongoing work. We are still collecting uh, uh, picker samples and try to like, widen and make more samples to make it a more clear picture of this. But our working hypothesis is like after the isolation of ancestors on the island, then only they started uh, separate into A and B groups. We think that it's probably in the south. And then because uh, then the A, group went into the central highlands and then the B group just like uh, stayed in the lower surrounding areas and then the B group uh, dispersed from south to north. That's mainly because you can see more variation of the B group in the south than in the north. But then of course this is also uh, we uh, can't say it confirmed because we have to have more data and samples that represent the whole country in a representative manner. But this is the initial work and this is what we are doing. So there's no firm conclusions, just a working hypothesis for the moment. And then, of course, uh, when we look at the prehistoric studies, actually, like, you know, like in India, Sri Lanka also very famous for its uh, prehistoric studies and, of course, prehistoric cave sites. You can see in uh, Sri Lanka, we have many important prehistoric cave sites throughout the country. They are distributed in the uh, wet zone as well as in the dry zone. And there are a cave sites as well as open areas. So most of the cave sites are located in the western part of the country, western actually wet zone of the country, but especially like the Potan cave and the cave that is you find in the dry zone of the country. But other than that, uh, most of the cave sites are located in the wet zone of the country. And the important uh, part of it is in almost in all of these cave uh, sites, the animal remains, we get uh, monkey bones. Lot of monkey bones uh, constitute the animal remain parts of the country, especially the Fahian cave. Though it is said as 35,000 uh, BP dated as, but the recent excavations makes it up to like up to 60,000. So that is why that is one of the oldest uh, cave sites in the country, and they have found human remains there as well. But in all these places, you get a lot of uh, monkey bones for the, the remains. And not just one or two, about 75% of the animal bones uh, are of monkey. So that's, that means all, all these earlier people have been uh, eating uh, monkeys. So during their, that these are all hunter gatherer people. So they have been. Uh, hunting primates for food because in some of these uh, we, uh, we don't ever get complete bones of this tribe. All are partial partial bones, very difficult to identify. 
only the proximal and distal sides we can identify and most of the bones are crushed. So that's why we don't get any complete bones. And then of course, uh, like we were able to uh, like analyze some of the, the animal remains or bones that was found in a prehistorical dry zone cave site at sea, the Bia Potan, the one that you see to the northern side of the country. And it was dated to about uh, approximately 6,000 to 8,000 8, years before present. And then, of course, uh, we only offer the other 34 fauna species belong to 29 genera, but we only analyze the the primate bones, and for this we got uh, the help from Professor Kawai from the uh, uh, Taka from Takai from Primate Research Institute, who is doing about the primate uh, primate bones. So, in addition to the animal remains, we were they they were able to excavate. The excavation was done in 1981. And they were they are were two complete human skeletons also uh, excavated from the, the cave. And of primate bones, there were many fragments of primate bones. There were mandibles, uh, mandible fragments, mainly we were able to get mandible fragments to teeth, and then of course maxillary uh, fragments, then humus. Uh, humerus, radius, or tibia, and then we were able to get uh, many calcaneus, talus, patellas, and a lot of teeth. So these are the kind of uh, bones that we found. And then uh, you can see in these pictures, so these are the uh, metraxum fossils that were that uh, we analyzed. And of course, we did the measurements and it was published separately and then of course these are the uh, the lander bones and then what we can see is we were able like in this uh, animal remains there were more uh, lander bones compared actually we, we when we were trying to analyze in the skulls only we found this the there were a lot of lander bones compared to the maquettes. So that could be one reason because compared to the maquettes and uh, uh, langurs, the maquettes were small body than in us. Even during our present surveys, what we find is people tend to eat langur meat more compared to the maquette. It could be one reason because langurs are more large bodied so they could get more meat out of one animal than with the uh, our maquettes because you know Mecca sinica is the smaller the smallest maquette species out of all the maquettes out of all the 22 maquette species that we find in the world so that is why maybe they tend to uh, hunt more of the langurs than the maquettes so these are some of the things that we analyze. And then this is uh, some of the ethnoprimatological studies that we uh, did. So here also, when we look at the ethnoprimatological studies, we looked at it in uh, different aspects. And one is kind of like entertainment because you know, like when we talk about the human climate the interactions, there's always we talk about the negative impact. I'm not saying that it's uh, it is uh, not wrong, but especially with this uh, this uh, destroying of crops. So that is the main concern in Sri Lanka as well. But there are some positive aspects of uh, human private interactions as well. So that is why so we were mainly we were concerned about that as well. So we were trying to find about the monkey entertainments, you know, in Sri Lanka also. I know in India also there should be 
many like there are monkey entertainers there are a pe people train monkeys and they, they like in these pictures they like uh, wore like very colorful outfits and then they take them on roads and have these shows so there are different kind of shows and with the monkeys these people take snakes as well so there are monkey dancers as well as snake dancers in in, in one person so that is why so in sri lanka in the northwestern province there's a place called tambur stegum they are event also the whole village they are lively for this this uh, they are monkey entertainers so they in every house there are at least two or three uh, macaques that they have trained and the people like the the male in the house they are hardly at home for three weeks like at a time a month three weeks in a month they go they go to different places in the country for this entertaining like monkey as monkey entertainers and then they come back and stay in the village for like one week and then they go again so that is their life so in all the houses other than the monkeys most of them have snakes as well so in their they learn, teach them how to do these different kind of perform and also in sri lanka like uh, the performance like this and monkey in the species that they choose like is only talk because they never uh, talk about they never take the lenders as entertainers and of course as we all know it has like it's positive points actually the the macaques because they are more people friendly and then they are more easy to manipulate the lenders and of course they are food helps they eat anything so it is to maintain i think maybe it could be one reason and very easy to teach tricks to macaques as well when i know like as all of us are they are like in thailand they use uh, them to pluck coconuts but in sri lanka yet we don't have so i think it's big deal i don't know if it depends on the climate like the, the species of the macaques but sri lanka so far we don't have that and then when we look at the pet monkeys of course what the species both the langur species and the mon uh, the macaques are also used as pets but Uh, what i have seen is also with this uh, human primate this uh, cop destroying as well the uh, it all happens it all with the, the which uh, monkey species that they use depends on the distribution of the species because all these um, uh, lesser species were mainly the pet monkey from the western prop because in the western province of the uh, of the country you don't get much of uh, macaques it's mainly the langur so that's why in those areas you get more langur species so even when the pets also become the the langurs and same with the the this crop uh, destroying also the destroying of the the crops the home grown or commercial crops also in the western province most of the animals that are destroyed or the crops are the lenders not the macaques is because macaques cannot be found much in the western part of the country so in other parts when there is like i have one one research site in the in the middle of the country and they are also when you have both macaques and langurs it's the the macaques that destroy the crops more than the langurs i think it's same in uh, india as well but this is what i want to say is this is the plus side of the human primate interaction that they people do really get uh, 
put things out of the garnet, not just the bad things. And this is the other important thing. I really like this area. This is part of the ethnophrontological studies. It is the, the use of primate body parts by traditional doctors to make traditional medicine for certain illness. So we did a countrywide survey, survey on we went to each of these central, central province, northern province, north central, northwestern, eastern, Sabaragamo, southern, Uva, and uh, western. So this is the nine provinces of the Sri Lanka. So we did a brief survey of the provinces to see the kind of uh, uh, traditional uh, medicine and the, the body part of the primate that they use for this uh, medicine. But here, of course, you have to understand that this is not so common now. This has been happening in 15 to 20 years ago, more common than now. So when we look at, so we look at this thing in um, different species as langurs and uh, macaques. So in langurs, you can see langur meat. People have been using langur meat for many, uh, many illnesses, like as for asthma. That's so we have seen. It's a very common thing in most of the provinces. They eat langur meat for asthma, and then especially in the central and the Sabaragamo, south, southern and the Sabaragamo area, they use langur meat for good eyesight. And some very rarely, the only case we uh, found out was in the eastern side that they use it for leprosy. And then some for mainly for malnutrition and then fires. And you can see even for heartburn, kidney and lung diseases, they think that it is Food and then meat again for boils and TB and heart and lung diseases and uh, liver they use for malnutrition and then heart also for malnutrition and even now uh, the indigenous community when the people other when the women are pregnant they use they dip the lunger liver in honey and then they eat it so. There are things like even some are practicing very remotely. And then, of course, uh, they use uh, their monkey's hands and tail, like uh, the portions that they make to wound the cracks uh, in, uh, in hand and feet. And then, of course, uh, they use langa oils. Uh, langa oil, they make langa oils and use it for burns. These are all for lenders and then of course for macaque. So it's also like say for macaque meat, they use, they, they make this, this is in Ayurveda as well, we call it as Hanuma Patne. They use the meat with other things as a cure for pirates and then meat the asthma, same as uh, gray langer, whooping for malnutrition, feces, this oil. Especially in the southern price, we have found that uh, they apply uh, monkey oil, actually lango oil, to fractures. So they make a oil to fracture. They say it's a, it's a traditional uh, cure for that. And then they use urine for snake bites. And this is not very specified. In some areas, they use lowest tears. You know, like it's they don't say it for exactly how they do it, but they say that they use lower tears uh, in North Central from, and that is in the traditional medicine part. But this primate body parts that they use as rituals. You know, like in Sri Lanka, there are like in in the rural areas. There are a lot, of, they use a lot of macaque body parts for ritual. There are a lot of different kinds of rituals in many parts of the country. And of course, there are myths and beliefs about the prime. So in some myths and beliefs, they, they, 
they think primates are good, but in some they think it has some bad effect on people. For example, in southern uh, province, southern province is very famous for these rituals in the country. So they are like what they do is for especially for diseases like asthma. They treat like they they are langur teeth as pendant after like you know, treating it with traditional rituals. And they write and they think that it cures the disease. And also in this uh, province, they use talk macaque and purple face skins to make drums. And especially, you know, there are these rituals we call as toil that they perform certain things to cure certain diseases. So in there, for the drums, they use this kind of uh, macaque and lander skins. And then myths in this province mainly are that um, they believe that it, it is uh, bad luck if a monkey calls out just before someone leaves the house to work. And also the interesting part is here in this uh, southern province, they think that the, that the right side of the the lender's body as human flesh. So we were quite interested in that also. They think that uh, the, the monkey's lender's uh, right side has human flesh. So when they, people are not eating actually, they want to go, but they refuse nowadays to eat. And even when they eat it, they leave the right side out, it seems. Yeah, so this is also we thought it was quite interesting. Uh, to here and then uh, this is also a kind of a ritual in the Sabaragamo province also there are the heart was given to pregnant women uh, and then also the skull skin and penis was used in Tovis. Tovil is a kind of a, like a uh, again a ritual to cure certain traditional TV like uh, diseases Curing, try to cure them using traditional healing rituals. And then, of course, uh, in this part of the country and some part in southern province also, they use meat, blood, and bones of the monkeys uh, to, uh, for honium, or we can say for black magic or bone. This is quite common even nowadays when you do either this for a low honium. They still use the skull and the blood. Then, even in the meat, they say land meat. So, part of the land meat is monkey meat as well. And then, of course, uh, the myths and beliefs people believe that if monkeys enter into the house through kitchen door, that somebody will seriously like fall and will fall ill. And then, of course, they say that uh, this is also quite interesting. They believe that macaques were created by the demon called Vasavarti Mara. You are so familiar with that. To cause trouble for villagers. And this is actually for the, they mean this is since they destroyed the crops. Because not only for the macaques, they say the, uh, the other animal that was created by Vasavarti Mara was the wild pig. So these tools, so these are kind of beliefs, but I told you, uh, like people don't, nowadays people don't believe it much, but earlier they used to believe it more. And in the central province also, they use uh, the intestine of the macaque was around, wrapped around a person's uh, neck for short, short time without uh, like talking to anybody, they do it early in the morning. And they say it's for Apala. We have something called Apala that is, you see, like people in Sri Lanka, they believe more about the horoscopes. And when there are uh, unfavorable positions of the planet in one's horoscope, they say that bad things happen. So as to as a remedial measure, they seem to be doing this kind of thing. And then, of course, in the north central province, as ritual objects, they used to some content of the language and uh, applied on the head for of the 
electrician person who think that it goes away. And then as in other areas, they say the people believe that if monkey falls out in the morning just before the light, it's like the cake falls, I think, in Sri Lanka. I, I think you also might be having similar things that, uh, it, it, that it brings bad luck to people. And also in the Western province, also Northwestern province, uh, these uh, lowest tiers with other ingredients were ritually smeared on a plate to see into the future. Actually, we call it as, not only the future, we call it as uh, Anjana. I don't know if you are like, familiar with the ter term. So when you look into the Anjana, that you can see if there was something was like stolen, you go and see an Anjana and say who took it and where it was hidden, something like that. And they say for that, that they use uh, lowest tears. And then um, the same thing as bad luck here also happens. So it seems like in many parts of the country, they think if they, it's bad luck to hear a monkey call just when they try to leave the house for work. And um, in your province, uh, it was believed uh, that uh, if you want to increase the intelligence, it's, like, it's good to eat the longer heart. Uh, and in, in the Uber province also, they say the right side of the land is probably has human flesh. And in Western provinces also, it's same. Most of the, like with the other areas, in general, that they think that the left side of the human, uh, how, like lander bodies have human flesh. And then, of course, they eat a lot of uh, lander meat to cure asthma and then of course uh, most people think that it's bad luck to leave the house if a monkey falls when you are about to leave. So I think uh, I think I went over time uh, but uh, thank you for listening and uh, Thank you, ma'am. That was that was a wonderful talk, uh, ma'am. We have uh, two options now. Uh, a lot we we have lots of questions pouring in. Uh, would you like to hear to the questions from the uh, people themselves, or would you like me to read them out to you? It's okay. They they can ask. Yeah, you can ask. Okay, so uh, people, if you can, um, ma'am, can you stop screen sharing so that yeah. your face is visible? I mean, that would that that will make. Is it okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. So, uh, uh, if anybody has questions, could you uh, could you unmute yourself or raise your hands? Okay. Uh, while that is happening, ma'am. Uh, um. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, Partha. Go on. Yeah, uh, hi. It was a lovely talk. Uh, so, my question to you is like I've seen that. Um, that is uh, about lorises. Uh, the the habitat is little uh, different for Nordicus and Grandis, right? I mean, yes. Uh, so, are there any places where they co-occur, and whether there is some difference in? Uh, is there a niche separation among them, or yeah. any difference in behavior? Yeah, actually, you know, in, in, in some parts, actually, I don't know, there's not any in depth. You know, in Sri Lanka, the private behavioral work is very limited. It's not okay. as much as I think in India as well. But there are uh, some studies to say that there are these, you know, even in uh, macaques, that there are uh, mixed, mixed species. And even for the lenders at Polona Road, but the thing is, there's not uh, any detailed studies on that. How about in uh, in, in India? Uh, yeah. um, uh, when it comes to lorises, you have more studies from Sri Lanka than in India. <laughs> okay, I thought uh, that was all, all, all the papers that we refer to are from Sri Lanka. So uh, <laughs> India is even more limited. Uh, we have the Malabar slender lorises that I work on. I think oh. I'm 
this uh, the, all the information that I'm putting forth is kind of one of the first information apart from the distribution work that has been done. Yeah. Uh, no, nice. The only thing is I think like actually someone is the one who's really at the moment doing work on uh, low risk. Maybe it's because uh, if their lifetime is bit, the lifestyle is difficult to Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes ma'am ram would you like to take uh, the next question i i mean yours is the next question uh, yes smita gladly uh, that was a really very interesting talk uh, i hope really. that uh, it is useful too yes 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 lots of questions so uh, i have two questions but maybe i will ask one now maybe the next one later because yeah. of the context yeah. so uh, uh, you showed that some of these langurs had uh, uncommon colors right uh, the yeah. yeah. langurs had a pale morph and then you had uh, these uh, 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 gray langurs that were slightly darker so yes. in in the indian western guards uh, yeah. we we have uh, these nilgiri langurs right Sem yes, uh, semnopithecus yes. johnai yeah yeah uh, and in many places it's not uncommon to see hybrids existing between uh, the nilgiri langurs and the gray langurs that are present in that area okay so do you think there is a chance of maybe hybrids between the grey langurs in sri lanka and the purple face and also do their uh, 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 ranges overlap That's yeah yeah you know like there are like in many parts in, like there are the the wet zone means the dry zone parts so in the, actually you know we have uh, wet zone dry zone and intermediate zone in sri lanka yeah. so in this intermediate zone you get the ranges of both languages so they are actually that's like i don't know if it's uh, rickers uh, and then they were like they were telling about kind of there are mixed, mixed species associations as well okay so there is a chance yeah. that they might be hybrids right uh, yeah but the thing is like the the the, the pictures that i show you is from uh, mainly from um, himalaya you know near and radhapura i don't know if you have heard it but then yeah i mean it's it, it's uh, good that uh, that you told me because that also in there they are like the, the rangers overlap so are there any papers on that uh, on the nilgiri and uh... on the nilgiri uh, i think there are some anecdotal accounts i don't think there's uh, been any scientific study looking at the genetics of these two but although i think people are working on it Yes. Uh, so this, as of right now, there's no genetic evidence that these are hybrids. But then it's anecdotally looks very clear because both the troops are very close by, and yes, only yes. in these uh, where there's a, a, a proximity of these troops, you find these individuals containing mixed characteristics. Ah, okay. Uh, that's that's interesting. Yes. Yeah. So that we have there are overlaps even like like so far from two places we see from Polonaro. Galway actually Ravindra is the one who who got these photos. Like I I put his name also there. So in uh, Bihinkale and then even in Galway, that's all in the it's more towards the Sigiriya side. There you can see it's a that's a overlap in the ranges as well. Okay, so yeah. my other Thank question is on yeah. yeah my other yeah, question is on talk macaques. So I I guess I'll ask it later. Maybe there are other questions. No, no, that's okay. No, that's okay. <laughs> there are other questions on langur, so. It's, okay, uh, Joydeep, would you like to take your question, or do you want me to read it out, Joydeep? Uh, Joydeep, I. Uh, okay, I guess. Uh, yeah i guess he might be having internet issues uh, his question is from uh, morphological characteristics purple face langurs have features of both genus semnopithecus and trichopithecus is there any genetic study done to find the nearest species of purple face langur since there is no trichopithecus uh, distribution west of northeast uh, india and bangladesh it's quite long <laughs> yeah no actually what happened is like there's no gender, uh, genetical work done so far on the langurs but uh, we have been collecting with our macaque samples the langur sample langur ficus samples as well and uh, now professor tanaka is analyzing the langurs yeah so okay. it's still in progress and we still don't have the results oh okay yeah uh, abdut would you like to take the next question that's yours um uh, hello ma'am so Hi. i wanted to ask uh, uh, like uh, is there any selective advantage to the uh, white morphs 
like uh, are they getting selected more by females or the males which are that that's actually what we were looking on so actually in this uh, like you can see from our data also there are eight adult males and in they are like they are most of them are alpha male you know like the, the langurs it's the one male one male it's a harem system they are like social organization so one male and uh, several female social organization that they show so in there in uh, in some stage in some troops the alpha male is a white male okay yeah so it could be a reason like that the females might be choosing preferring the the white male white male yes okay something like a novel male uh, uh, gets chosen more something yeah. That yes, maybe. something like that. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Abdul. Uh, Ram, your talk question. Oh, uh, hi. So I was just looking at Rana's comment in the uh, in the chat. So he's already answered one of my questions. So the question yeah. was basically that you know uh, since talk macaque and uh, uh, bonnet macaques have uh, diverged, then they seem yeah. to be sister species. The question yeah. was when when do you have uh, any dates to how when they have diverged? You know, like uh, uh, this comma so uh, did uh, I? I'm actually I'm not familiar with the genetics. Yeah, stuff, so, I, so I've just seen that Rana has uh, replied, and uh, yeah. he has published a paper uh, with Chakrabarti. Uh, yeah, at all 2007. Yeah, they have, they have dated to 0.17 million years ago. I think uh, uh, yes. Rana, da, if you can come, maybe you can maybe discuss this. Uh, Rana, da, yep. would you like to chip in? Um, well, I no, I hi, uh, no, uh, I just responded because uh, we had uh, uh, actually uh, done this work when we were looking at mitochondrial DNA uh, <clears throat> as well as uh, Y chromosome sequences to try and look, and this was with reference to the Munzala actually when we were looking at the uh, evolutionary genetics of the Munzala. At that point, we had dated, we had some samples from. Uh, uh, sequences from the ah. macaque as well as the bonnet macaque and we estimate that it was about 170,000 yeah. years ago. Yeah, that because uh, I I remember that uh, Kaumatos are not did something after right. the Radiata and uh, uh, Sinica right. and he also said something around 2 million. Right. Uh, no, uh, slightly less, I think, uh, at least according to our study, Charmali, yeah. it was about yes. 170,000 years ago. So that's... Uh, it's 170,000. About oh, okay. 7 million. Oh, okay. okay. 7 million. Uh, yeah. 2 million is... In fact, this paper that I have, I can send that to you as well. Uh, yeah, please. please. Because, yeah, we looked at the, the entire Seneca group. And uh -huh. the first divergence that actually happened was... The protocin from the protocinica, we had a branch which came into roughly from Burma into yeah. northeast India. And mm -hmm. then when the Munzala branch went out, the yeah. acid in the Tibetan had branched out much earlier than that itself. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then from this stock, we had a branch moving down south, which was the, bon the radiata sinica complex. Yeah. And then they separated out, as it seemed, uh, about a, a 0.17 million years ago. Oh, okay, okay. That's listed in this paper. I'll send it to you, and it's yeah. your yes. chat box in case anybody wants to take a look yes. at it. Yes, yes. that's so interesting, yeah. uh, sir. Uh, 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 we, Anik, yeah, you wanted to say something, Ram? Uh, yes, so the other thing was also very interesting, that, you know, in talk, there are these, uh, there's a divergence between uh, two groups, A and B, which have different uh, elevations that they live in. Yes. So it'll be good to see what is the divergence states in these uh, two uh, groups. Yeah, it's because actually what we are yeah. like, so we are trying to collect more samples to to represent uh, the these special areas more because we don't have much samples from the intermediate zones. So now we have collected almost uh, like quite a lot of samples for the moment and they are doing the analysis. So then they can be of more certain. Yeah. yeah. At the moment, this is what we can say from that uh, small number. But it's still, still very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can Thanks. I move on to the next question? Yes. Yeah. Sarmishta, do you want to take your question? Sarmishta? Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Very good. Uh, hello, ma'am. Hi. I am Sharmista uh, yeah. from India. Okay. Uh, I just want to uh, ask uh, one question. That is, from the sub fossils of Trachypithecus species, it was found yeah. that uh, they used to eat flesh and all. But yes. uh, is there any evidence that suggests that uh, they ate other foods, other uh, food, other animals? Uh, maybe insect, insects or fruits, anything which were included in the diet. Yes, there are there were a lot of nuts, different kind of nuts, and uh, insects. Of course, uh, there's not uh, much on insects, but they have uh, uh, like uh, eaten a lot of snails, water snails, and fish. Some, yeah. Okay. And plant parts. Yeah, and there were some plant parts as well. Interesting. Oh. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, I'm going to be reading out one question from YouTube now. Yeah. Uh, from Matt uh, Wisdom. Is there an understanding in Sri Lanka among the general public and at governmental level of the importance of primate conservation or are primates mainly viewed as entertainment, pests or pets? No, actually what happens is uh, about... Uh, Sometimes then, because you know now we have this problem of uh, human uh, macaque conflict. You know that they are destroying many things, and sometimes the perception is not that good. So because of that, that we have made policy. The wildlife department made a policy, and they are trying as a result try to make awareness. So it's because you know, like uh, in Sri Lanka, especially, like. We people really tolerate the macaques even if they destroy their garden crops or commercial crops because uh, they don't like killing uh, animals much because most of this as a result of Buddhist and Hindu cultures. Yeah. Okay. So they don't actually. I'm quite surprised how tolerant they are, especially the the, the damage they do for these uh, home gardens. They don't kill them. They they like chase them, but uh, very rarely. The, the the killing or the they go to very strict measures, mainly on the commercial crop, not on home gardens. Okay. Um, Ma'am, there's one more question from YouTube, uh, from Pankaj Soni. Uh, is there any evidence of food, uh, evidence found regarding spread of diseases through monkeys and langurs? Is there any evidence? So, is there zoonosis about for humans? Yeah, I guess, uh, that, yes, yes, that's, I yeah. guess that's what he's. Yeah, actually for Sri Lankan primates, we have not found yet, but uh, like in one of our, uh, like, uh, like we also did some parasite, uh, primate parasite studies and uh, published a paper also. They are, they are like some of these strongyloids are quite, they are the same species as the humans. Yeah, but there's no records of transmission, human animal transmission, like no records of it. No records of it. Okay. No records. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> we do have uh, records of zoonotic diseases here in Western Ghats. Uh, uh, we have we, 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 uh, we yeah. KFD, Kassanov Forest Disease. It does happen. I mean, monkeys are the host, yeah. but uh, but it, there are few here. Mm -hmm. um, Anandya Sinha, sir, uh, I see that you have a a, a comment. Yeah, uh, I just I just. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to say that the Kaisanur forest disease, I think, is an important one. Yes, uh, what is interesting about it is, of course, it has remained restricted to the Shimoga region roughly, though occasionally. Uh, not in years, not anymore, sir. It is spread to uh, Kerala now. Yes, yes. But I don't know. Is that regular or is that sporadic still in Kerala? Uh, uh, from the studies that uh, my volunteer did, Deepika, right. she says that it's it seems like a sporadic thing but then they still then still looking into it because we we had it this year we had it last year we we've been having it constantly for 3 years correct, but correct. not not as widespread like before but in small right, pockets right. so and, uh, and she's she's working on it tell everyone i think this is actually spread by a tick 
uh, which uh, carries it between bonnet macaques as well as humans. And it does cause lethality in both species. So that yeah. I think is important to recognize. And there is a very important large project, I think, which involves several organizations now, including the Institute of Public Health in Bangalore, as well as I think Dr. Abita Meem's group uh, from A3, who have been involved in looking at the epidemiology, as well as the, the, uh, the molecular sort of basis uh, for of this disease. So that I think is important. I know it has sporadically come to Bandipur, Malai, where we work on some years has uh, led to death of both langurs as well as macaques, but it was very sporadic. It hasn't been reported back. And in many of these cases, unfortunately, we think it may be because of KFD, but often uh, it's not finally tested for and then it dies out and we forget about it again. Yes, but because the, the peak is so short, collection of data is very difficult. It becomes difficult. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So uh, that's in kind of very interesting. <laughs> In our macaques also, they have found that they have uh, malaria parasites and deng dengue parasites, but there are no records of the transmission. Exactly. It's the same here, Sharmali. I yeah. don't think there are any official records of outbreaks, which Outbreak, without yes. doubt came from these species to humans. Ah. We don't have that or the other way around, unfortunately. Yes. So we yes. are thinking about those issues. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Anand sir. Uh, Ma'am, you've got a lot of compliments from uh, YouTube, and I'm sure if does anybody else have any questions? Ma'am, you answered a lot of your our questions through your talk. I guess everybody <laughs> and everybody's got their answers already. So, but uh, does anybody have any clarifications or discussions that you want to have with Ma'am? And 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 Rana sir, we have both. Yeah. <laughs> Ma'am, that was amazing and we are so glad you could be here with us and give us so much information about our neighboring uh, country. Um, I would uh, now ask Partha to come because he would like to say a few words. Hi. Partha? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, it was actually really fantastic to know about neighboring primates. Um, I mean, we have, like some of us who went to Sri Lanka had a small glimpse of what exactly uh, a small continent like that can hold uh, with respect to the uh, diversity of it and the work which has been going for like really long time and listening to the culture and uh, the poetry and everything which is so much surrounded around uh, monkeys it actually is so much relatable for us as well who uh, I mean monkeys are I mean primates are so close to our cultures and how we uh, see them and how we see them as an extension of our own in, at, at times and it, it was really wonderful uh, it's I mean it's uh, such a bad thing to admit that many of these things are actually new things for us I mean it's a name they are neighboring primates but a lot of things are new for us and it's absolutely uh, amazing to hear that and I mean, I was completely absorbed in the talk and I'm sure I, I speak for everybody here who are present today. And I mean, uh, I hope that sometime we will have a you know, in-person talk and soon we can have you in India and we can exchange stories and uh, you know, uh, some poetry maybe even. So, yeah, I know, I, I really, I'm, just, I'm really into that side. Yeah, maybe it's because I'm doing anthropology and I'm more drawn to that side there as well. <laughs> But uh, yeah, because I know we have quite similar things because like I, I didn't tell because I, I told you in the beginning, this is just a general talk and I didn't want to get go in depth and go you all <laughs> with my talk. That gives us an excellent opportunity to have you again at some point of time <laughs> of your talk. A sequel. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure everyone absolutely love it. I'm, I would love uh, to hear that. And my sincere thank you to Dr. Shamali to, to um, you know spend so much time with us. Even after a whole day of taking classes, I cannot mm -hmm. imagine myself doing that. So uh, it's it's a real pleasure and honor for all of us. And if you have anything to say, please, uh, I would like to hear. Yeah. As well. like for me also like i'm really i think i'm the one who's honored to like give this talk and thank you but it's so much for like inviting me because uh, i really like talking with uh, 
uh, the people who are doing finance and you all are very energetic and very enthusiastic and i really like because i see it uh, in our students as well so the ones that who are in undergraduates also so that is why like i really enjoyed and i really like the group and i hope that yeah. this will i mean not like this let's be in touch and we can you know like the two continents they are so close but i feel like that we are so apart far apart we yes. cover cannot so but uh, i would really like to get in touch at exchange ideas because Absolutely. i know like uh, that's i think very important for for us so for us also as uh, aip or the association which we formed with the help of a lot of senior primatologists but uh the main idea was to have collaborations between students yeah. in india between people from uh, india and abroad yeah. and um it it would be great if we can think of something as a collaborative study later on and because yes. because phylogeographically it's geographically phylogeographically and so many things there are so many similarities and yes. as already uh, mentioned about the paper which already have you know uh, mentioned about tok and seneca being very recent um, yeah. Uh, you know, split. Yes. I think uh, there's a lot to be done uh, from Indian perspective as well, and uh, Sri Lankan and uh, primatological perspective as well. Yeah. I mean, If uh, you need any help from our side, information, just tell me. Like, I'm very happy to provide them to you all. Thank you so yes. much. Yes. Yes. That means a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, the next so, up. Uh, would you like to announce yeah sure so uh, we are actually not giving any breathing space after, so we will have a lot of uh, talks coming up so next we will have dr cyril gruter from uh, university of western australia so he will be talking about <coughs> um, uh, xenophilia I, i think a topic which is very relevant in today's day and uh, uh, we know how we actually not giving any breathing space after, so we will have a lot of uh, um I'm sorry, there is some lag from my my side. So uh, I think he is going to uh, talk about xenophilia and how the human society actually some basic underpinnings of human society. So I think it's a it's going to be a very exciting talk again, and I'm sure all of us will join in again. And it's uh, it's on twenty fifth at four uh, thirty p.m. Lag from my my side. So uh, I think he is going to uh, talk about. Xenophilia. Thank you, uh, Partha. Uh, sir, would you uh, like to say a few words? I mean, you're chatting into the chat space, but uh, we would love to hear from you too. All of us will join in again. Me? It's on twenty fifth at. Yes, sir. Anand, yes, sir. Rana, sir. Yeah. yeah. No, nothing. Nothing. It was wonderful, as Thank I mentioned. You, uh, Bob, it was wonderful. Uh, sir, would you uh, like to once again? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for spending time it was wonderful to meet your 